Okay. Uh, we're going to call the meeting to order. Uh, it is the Design and Historic Review Commission, Thursday, May 20th, 2021. Uh, I have 10.02 a.m. Uh, we have established that we have a quorum present. And our first item of business is consideration and approval of the April 15th uh, minutes. I think everybody's had a chance to look over those. Uh, if there are any questions or additions, uh, we can talk about that now. Otherwise, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve. And I'll second that. Okay, how many names do you want? Uh, so, Commissioner Mazur made a motion. We'll say Commissioner Schmidt had the second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. We'll move on to the regular agenda. Uh, at staff request, we're going to move case CA21-02 uh, to the top of the list there uh, so that uh, Mr. Fisher can get back over across the way. This is 3 South Randolph Street, a request for certificate of appropriateness for a like-for-like -like replacement of the slate-tiled roof on an existing church located at 3 South Randolph Street. And with that, I'll hand it over to Mr. Fisher with city staff. Thank you, Chair McLaughlin and members of DHRC. So our first case today, uh, this is a certificate of appropriateness, uh, CA 2102 at 3 South Randolph Street. So this is the Episcopal Church. Um, they're replacing a like-for-like, -like, so they're due to hail damage. Um, their roof was uh, heavily damaged last year, and they want to replace that, and they're going to use the same tile as they did before. So uh, I did a little bit of research. Uh, this will be fairly quick. Um, it's 1.54 acres. It's zone CBD downtown. And again, it's a like-for-like -like replacement. Because it's a historical property, it needed to come before you all today. So this is looking at north of the church. So this is the original uh, Da Vinci tile. It's like a rock slate um, tile. That's, it's going to look exactly like the pictures that you see here. This is looking north and then looking south of the church. Uh, then there's an education building uh, just down the street in the same complex. Uh, I believe there's, that roof is also being replaced. Okay. Uh, and then this is looking east of the church. Uh, so we did find this is um, the reason it's historically designated. It was a, a national historic registry. The original church, uh, according to the, the um, federal records, um, was constructed in 1929. Uh, these photos were taken a little bit after that in uh, 1988, but uh, that's very similar to that tile in 1988 and uh, 1929. Uh, this is the, the tile, uh, a sample of it um, that the applicant has provided. So it's, again, that really nice Da Vinci slate, very high quality um, roof tile, uh, same as the existing tile and closely. Uh, it may be identical, but it certainly closely matches the original construction. Um, so there's, there's 10 criteria. A lot of them kind of repeat, so I'm going to do this very quickly for a certificate of appropriateness. Um, the Da Vinci tile is like I said, identical to the current roof tile before the hail damage. Uh, the original qualities of the building would not be destroyed if the tile was replaced. Uh, the new roof will match like for like. Uh, it's, again, close to the original, same as number four. Uh, and then we're not aware of any surface cleaning. There's no archaeological resources, and no contemporary alterations. And again, if the essential form of the building would remain if the roof is being replaced, it's just the roof. Uh, staff recommends approval with two conditions. So the colors, dimensions, and materials shall be consistent with the renderings approved by the DHRC, and they will be. Number two, the applicant shall contact permits and inspections. Uh, this is something that uh, building permits has been asking for, is that they register their roof contractor whenever they're doing uh, changes on the roof. Uh, and then finally, that that roof should meet all manufacturing specifications, which I believe they would. Uh, this concludes staff's presentation. Uh, the applicant is here for any questions or comments as well. Thank you. Okay. Any commissioners have any further questions for staff on this case? I, I got a question. When you say like for like, is the roof on it right now, is that real slate? Or is it this Da Vinci? Because this is a composite material. That's my question. When you say like for like, but I think what's on there now is real slate. No. It's not? I'm gonna let the applicant, did you wanna come up y'all? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll just, to go I'm down just down curious. To... Okay. Um, the roof that is on there. If you'll identify yourself for the record, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry? If okay. you'll identify yourself oh, for the I'm record. Sorry. I'm Ann Shahan. Thank I'm um, Properties Co-Chair at Emmanuel Episcopal Church. It is a Da Vinci roof that is on there now, which was replaced at the last But it's store. a composite roof on that's right that's, now. That's what's on right now. Wow, I'm just, and so we are replacing with exactly the same, the same okay. thing. I was just yeah. curious because I figured that roof could stand the hell that we had, and obviously it didn't. Well, Da Vinci thought that we needed a total roof replacement, wow. so we went okay. Okay. No, mm -hmm. that's my only question. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, if there's no further questions for staff, we'll open it up for public comment. And there being none, if there's no further discussion, we'll open it up for a motion. Make a motion. We approve. I second it. Okay, that was a motion by Commissioner Thomas, uh, seconded by Commissioner Mazur. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. same sign. And moving right along. Okay. Thank you all. It's nice to see you again. Thank you. Yeah. Don't fall down on the way back over there. Be careful. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff, for, Thank you guys for coming in and participating. On Monday. Okay, now we're going to move on to case DD21-02-121 North Chadburn Street. Now, this is a tabled item, and my understanding is that City Legal needs us to make a motion to untable it and then vote to untable it. So can I hear a motion to untable the item? I'll make a motion to untable it. I second. Okay, that would be uh, Mazur Thomas. All in favor of untabling, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, this is a request for downtown district approval of an exterior remodel, including installation of a new front door, a new 16 square foot sign, and repairs to the roof's decorative crowning, located at 121 North Chadburn Street. We'll turn it over to staff. Good morning, Commission. Uh, Aaron Vinoy, Assistant Director of Planning and Development Services. So we do have this property at 121 North Chadburn Street. Um, the applicants are here today, and we're able to uh, work with them to uh, make some of the modifications that y'all suggested back, I believe, maybe either at the March meeting or maybe even at the April meeting, but I think it was the March meeting that y'all had some suggestions. So this is in the downtown district, uh, CBD, CBD area. So uh, it's District 3, Harry Thomas. So there's lots of things uh, that we look at to try to help the downtown district overlay zone. Um, one is obviously promote economic prosperity, encourage redevelopment, and that's what this uh, young couple has decided to do with this building, that they are wanting to be entrepreneurs and open up a space for the community uh, to help out. We believe this proposal is very consistent with what um, we would want at this part of the downtown district. Um, and so we're, we're kind of excited to see this older building gets uh, some revitalization. Of course, that's as the, the subject pro property kind of looks. Um, they are going with the installation of a new front door, painting around the windows to be matte black, a new 16 square foot sign, and it's actually a four foot diameter round sign, uh, and repairs to the roof's decorative crown uh, area up at the top, as, as I think y'all have seen before. So this is going to be the round sign that's a four by four, basically a diameter, um, four, four feet across with the Studio 121 events. It will be backlit, so you see the kind of the white area that will be lit through with the rest being the matte black. Uh, the, the windows will remain on either side as they are going to center the door and have it offset just a little bit so it meets the fire code of uh, egress coming out of the building. Um, they are going to be um, painting the area with taupe, and we've, I think we have, I, I believe Sherry Bailey put on the color types on here as well, and one recessed entry light that will be above where it will light the entryway as you come in and out. Uh, the area around the windows will be painted matte black. Um, they've got the, the code there, and the, pro, the purpose is to paint the horizontal cornice taupe to break up the visual appearance of the building and to repair the roof's decorative crowning. I'm going to get to some pictures here. I thought she had some pictures in there. I'm going to look at the staff report real quickly. Because I think in the staff report, and I'll come right back to my phone. If you do have a copy of your staff report, I would encourage you to turn to page 10. And it talks about proposed elevations. 
and you can see there where they have centered the door. It will be recessed in um, to meet the fire code, the fire egress code. The windows on either side will remain, and then they're going to do the painting um, to upgrade those and, and match. And if you look at page 11, it does have the two paint colors that are on the city's paint color palette for the downtown district. Um, I believe uh, one of y'all's, uh, one of the commission's concerns was the off-centering of the door. And now that they have actually got that centered, um, we do think that matches the circular shape of the sign will match uh, the circular windows that are up there on uh, kind of the mezzanine or the second floor level. Uh, and so we're, we, we believe from city staff that this is a very good uh, approach to trying to do some minimal things to the front of this building that will help them keep moving forward with their project and get this building back as a, a viable uh, building in our downtown. So with that, staff is recommending approval uh, with the three conditions of approval. Um, again, the colors, dimensions, and materials of all improvements should be consistent with what the board here meets. If there's any minor deviations uh, that they could be approved by the Planning uh, and Development Services Director, all the glass on the windows and doors shall be transparent so that uh, uh, individuals can see through and in and out and obtain the required building permits. With that, does there, are there any questions from the commission? I have a question. Yes, sir. How wide is that recess? I believe, and Jared, I'm not sure if you remember, is it six feet at the front and then it kind of angles back to the door width? More the, Please come up and speak at the mic if you don't mind. Uh, Jared Minton, uh, are you talking about for the actual recess part of the door? It'll technically be an eight by eight hole going back. Our door is uh, six foot wide, eight foot tall, and I was just going to make the whole, the recess part just eight by eight, just a big cube, eight by eight. Well, to, to comply with ADA, you need yeah. 18 inches on the, the, the lock side. Of the door, from the door to any obstruction, it has to be 18 inches. There'll be. So is that a double door? Is no, it, it's one. It's, it's one single one, door. One six, six foot wide. Mm -hmm. Wow. Be, <laughs> I've never seen a six. Anyway, foot you door. need mm -hmm. 18 inches on that side, that side, and I didn't know whether you had that was wide enough. That would make the the recessed area nine foot wide if you if you centered the six foot door. You'd have to be nine foot wide. Okay. Hmm. Hi, Melissa Minton. So the actual door is six feet wide, which the door is four foot, and there's one foot, 12 inches clearance on each side where there will be a Well, the ADA requires from the, the lock side where yes, the knob sir. is where you open the door, 18 inches from the edge of that door to any obstruction. Okay, so if we added six inches on the 12 outside of the door, would that comply yeah, with it? Added, yes, if sir. You, if you had a foot for the trim, and if you added another six inches, that yeah. would make we add a foot inches on so the outside of that. Yes, sir. With a six-foot door, and if, to be centered, it, you'd have to have nine foot wide. I mean, you, so is it, is it the, you want the door you're, off center. I make the assumption that it's y'all's desire that the door is centered in that opening and they would just need to accommodate whatever the ADA standard is on make it look centered. Yeah, so that should be on, set. when they get a building permit, that should be on that building permit. Yeah. Yeah. If so. you look at on page 11, the, the door, the actual door itself is four foot wide and then the two runners on the other side or a foot wide. Yeah, it has side lights on it. Yeah. The, the door is six foot wide, but the actual door yeah, way Yeah, I is see four what you're foot. saying. Yeah. And then I'll have a foot, on either, I'll have a foot on either side of that. So technically yeah, I'll see right here, Henry. Yeah, yeah, the door's on it. So you'll have, and by the time two, you put trim, you I'll should, have two foot, of, two foot on either side of the actual should be doorway. Fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Reading when it said the door six foot wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's actually. The, yeah, the, I thought that's what I thought too. I've never seen a six foot door. <laughs> that's a swinging door. That's a big door. That's a big door. A four foot's a big door, but that'll look good. That'll look good. Is there any other questions? No. Anybody have anything else for the applicants? No. Uh, just thank you guys for 
taking our suggestions. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks a lot yeah, better. Yeah, it's going to look very nice. I mean, we yeah. want to make y'all happy so we can we can Yeah, we, we appreciate y'all working for, with good us Good luck with this. It. And, it and thanks for investing in downtown, and we appreciate that. Uh, Thank you. I guess at that point, I'll open it up for any further public comment, if there is any. Uh, and if there's not, then we'll either have further discussion among the commissioners, or I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve this. A second. Okay, so that would be Commissioner James and Commissioner Thomas. I have a motion and second to approve as presented. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same simple. Congratulations. Good luck with everything. Thank you for participating. We're going to move on to RCC 19-17 amendment, a request for an amendment to an approval for a new awning within the river corridor at 16 East Beauregard Avenue, RC 19-17. Good morning. Again, Aaron Vinoy, Assistant Director of Planning and Development Services, uh, presenting RCC 19-17. This is an amendment to that uh, 2019 case. Um, they have already done some of the improvements out there, and it's looking really, really good. They even improved the, uh, the um, parking in the back. They've done some stucco work on the front. And so now they are going to look at changing out the awning. They had one design, and now they've... Uh, kind of change that design to be a little bit more of the style of what maybe the building was at the time uh, when it was built. So this is 16 East Burgard Avenue in the CBD downtown district um, and Harry Thomas is the uh, commissioner. So you can see this is the building here. Um, it's got kind of a, a very, um, I would almost just say plain front. They have done some stucco work on that since this picture was taken. Um, this, I believe, was the original looking um, awning that they were going to do, um, and now they have kind of changed it over to this more of a mid-century, a little bit modern, but still kind of a mid-century. You've seen this in other buildings downtown, that it's got just a little bit more of a, almost an industrial type look. And so they're looking at that. Of course, they have the structural drawings and things like that, and will be very similar to the one uh, that you see there on the right side of the screen couple of more examples. So they're proposing a metal building instead of the um, other kind of metal con. This is going to be more of a flat. Um, we'll have a little bit of, of a slope and pitch to run water off, but not as severe as the one before. Um, I'm going to go through here, and I thought she had some more pictures of it. Um, I apologize, but if, well, I guess... That is, the, I'm gonna go back to those pictures. So it, she did put them side by side, I apologize, I didn't see that. So on the left, you'll see how it's got kind of the cable ties, if you will, and you've seen some of the buildings like that, and then they're attached at the top. There's no, uh, that's really the structural members as well as the, the piece, the channel lock, block and stuff that goes in the, in the back part of that. The, this is just an amendment. Um, Staff could have approved this. We were kind of on the fence on um, yes or no, so we thought we'd bring it to the commission, let y'all make a decision on if you liked this awning or uh, if you'd prefer the original awning or something in between. If you'd say, well, hey, propose us something in between. Um, we do think it still fits with um, the style of building that they're doing there, and I think this was maybe at the request of one of their tenants that they would have something a little bit different. Um, I apologize, I don't know the, the full story, just getting this uh, late last night, trying to read through everything. Um, <clears throat> staff is recommending approval at this time. Um, of course, uh, one of the conditions be consistent with what um, the colors, dimensions, and materials uh, that this board, this commission would approve, uh, obtain a, a uh, permit um, for that to be hung there on, on the on the property. They have already gotten an easement or an encroachment, I should say, an encroachment for the sidewalk that it kind of projects out into the sidewalk that was taken care of back in 2019. So this is really just looking at does that awning fit the style um, or is there something different that the commission would like to see on that building? And with that, I'll open it up to questions and let me know if you want to go back to any of the photos. I like go back to the original building. Yeah. Okay. I want to sir. see. I want to see how that's going to tie because it doesn't look like that right now. <laughs> no, I. Be I, nice I, to see what they're doing. 
Yeah, I know that they, they have that. made some facade improvements, and I don't think that there's any other pictures. My next in question here. is: Is this new awning going to be the same dimension as the old? There's no dimensions on this, and yeah, there's no I, color. I, what color is it going to be? Give you as wide as the whole building, or it says How big dark. Is it? But that's a good. That is a good question. Yeah, I don't what is think. Dark? <laughs> is, is page eight the way it looks without the awning? But but isn't that what I think I saw the other you know, day? The building is, doesn't look like that right now. But I think like that's eight? just a close-up of a sample, to be honest with you. Uh, okay, I, I noticed there was some change on it, so I was thinking it was... Because I, I think if you look over to page 9, you'll see the same thing that's a little further out, and that page 8 is just a close-up of that kind of proposed. And you are correct. I just see that it says, looks like 20 feet across, well, no, that's the old one. Yeah, what it does is the not new one show a dimension, does it? Uh huh. I mean, there's no color. It says dark. Is it okay. black? The windows are like a black color right now. Are they going to match that or? That is a great question. I do not know the answer to that question. Unfortunately, I wish I did. I'm going to look through here to see if there's anything that talks about the colors, if they're going to match or not. But I don't recall uh, seeing all anything. Oh, it says dark. Correct. <laughs> My concern is if it's the full width of the building, that's going to kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Yes, sir. Because it's, there's no other building down there that's got anything that large. Well, would it be uh, advisable from the commission um, to possibly table this, get some more details, and bring this back? Yeah, we, as we need some more information. For the like for that. the June meeting, I think so. I, there's no dimension. We don't know. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we don't. Even it doesn't know show how low high low. it is because yeah. by code it has to be nine feet off the Correct. off the sidewalk. So there's nothing on it because the reason I want to see the original what they did now is because it's, I don't know how it's going to tie on. Yeah, with what they've done right. right now, I like to see where they're going to put it. Yeah, sir, so we can take some updated photographs of what they've done. Yeah. That way you can see yeah, a, how different. this might fit in and get the dimensions, the color palette, yes. those items uh, for this amendment. We can certainly do that. Any other questions of staff at this time? But just are we sure that nowhere in the paperwork does it answer these questions? Mm -hmm. I hate to take the list if the information's actually here. I looked through, I don't see it. I did not find it in the report as I read through the report and again just skimming through it. Again, I think as uh, Commissioner Mazur said that it just referenced dark metal. It doesn't really specify There's the no color. Dimension. The original the original one was twenty feet wide. Right. So I'm assuming that that's what's going to be on this one, and that I just think that's you know even underneath <laughs> even underneath it doesn't show what it is. Yeah. I mean, what what's Correct. the finish going to be under there? Doesn't doesn't show anything. Okay. okay. So do we do that by motion? I guess if we have to have a motion to untable, we need a motion to table. Uh, so I need a motion to table this item to next month. I make a motion to table it. Second. Okay, so that would be uh, Mazur and Schmidt. Move to table this until we get some of these questions answered. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and we'll move on to the division report if there is one. Yes, division report, a um, couple of just updates uh, staffing wise. Uh, Shelly Pasquale has uh, taken another position within the city to be the stormwater administrator. Y'all worked with her as a, a planner. Um, John James is, has already done some interviews for the planning manager and hopes to have a selection very soon that would start sometime in June. And he has also started interviewing planners for the, the uh, open planning position uh, that we have right now. And so the, those interviews are ongoing and so we, we feel like we'll be back up to full staff very soon um, and that will help out the caseload and then you don't have to look at me over here at these meetings and it'll be much better. <laughs> so the other things I just wanted to give uh, 
There were a few addresses um, that the city is doing uh, that we have actually done a couple of notice of violations to uh, in the downtown area and uh, another area of 501 South Irving for a Connex box and we are ongoing with some enforcement and working with those applicants to get applications in whether they're building permit applications and primarily the downtown district um, and the cultural district applications in and river corridor applications in for this board for some changes that they've made to the facades uh, of those buildings uh, as well as the site like the connex box so that enforcement is ongoing uh, we are trying to work with them to get in true applications they have not applied as of yet um, and so the city will have to make a determination with our code enforcement team of what the next step would be if uh, we take any, what's the next step of action to take, and we can have an update of that coming up soon. Okay, and that's everything. All right, as far as announcements, the next regular meeting of the DHRC is scheduled to begin on Thursday, June 17th, 2021 at 10 a.m. in the East Mezzanine Meeting Room, City Hall, 72 West College Avenue, uh, and we will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. And also would be Missouri and Schmidt. All in favor say goodbye. goodbye. goodbye.